this is a video. Not only is this like one of the, uh, you know, random videos that I thought I could put up with uh, uh, get away with a little bit lower production, but um, this was one of the videos that was wiped out in the great raid back plane crash of 2019. So I actually lost all of these experiments and footage and stuff, but I saw a video uh, yesterday, the day before, something like that, from uh, Christopher over at Explaining Computers. Um, I'll put a link down here. And I'm, I'm gonna use screenshots from uh, a couple of his experiments up here, so that's your uh, you know attribution right there, uh, fair use and all that stuff. But um, he did a comparison of single board, or of, uh, of uh, SD cards, micro SD cards, for s the purpose of using in single board computers. Specifically in his case, the Raspberry Pi 4, and for like, you know, general computing, and in particular using Crystal Disk Mark and a few other tests, I instead did them on a Raspberry Pi Zero W using a suite of tests from this website right here, which I will link in the video description below this video. And the inspiration, inspiration, inspiration was from Jeff Geerling's website where he was benchmarking uh, SD cards within um, Raspbian for a very particular reason. I was more interested in whether whether or not uh, 3D printing firmware could keep up as well as like um, you know, streaming G code and uh, printing off of Octoprint and those types of things. And if you go to either Jeff's website or the uh, the Pi Cluster website, you'll see a lot of tests that they ran. And if you look at that data, you'll see some very interesting things about like the types of boards that they use and the types of cards they use and that sort of thing. Now, going back to Christopher's work for a minute, these are slides from his video where you can go check it out. That's linked below as well. And he goes through all the different classifications of cards and what it's supposed to mean for data transfer rate and those types of things. But unfortunately that doesn't really apply when you're running an operating system off of a card and whether you're doing random, very small fragmented uh, data reads and writes. So those are the tests that I really kind of focused on and this took freaking forever and I lost all of the data I had except for this one stupid screenshot and a couple of videos. And ostensibly all that was just as B-roll and I had taken a screenshot of the spreadsheet for one of my other videos. I think it was the Wire Fans Hard video. So that's the only thing that survived. But part of the testing was also taking a uh, Pi W and uh, running all of these benchmarks and then overclocking it and rerunning the benchmarks in various different ways. And then I showed you how to overclock it and the difference with different heat sinks and that type of stuff. That gone to, but I may redo that in the future. So here is the chart um, from one of the spreadsheets that I did. Now, I'm sorry, this is not going to be very visually stimulating, but I need to stick this up here while um, I talk about it, obviously. So going from left to right here, I just had the, the manufacturer's ID, the capacity of the card. I kept them all under 32. I wanted to test 32 against 32 because when you have different chip configurations on these um, uh, SD cards, they tend to run at different speeds for different tests. So I wanted to make it, um, apples to apples and do all 32, but I also included some smaller and known to be slower, uh, SD cards that I had around specifically like the, um, NetAC, I think is what it was silk screened on it card that came with the Ender three, as well as a card that I got, uh, from Adafruit that had noobs on it. The, the noobs, um, for Raspbian operating system thing, and just some other random cards that I had around. So the model number I put in the next column, and that's very interesting important and all because lies well lies and mistakes even on amazon i ended up re returning like four of the dozen or so cards that i got because th they sent the wrong stuff it had a completely different picture on the advertisement than they did the uh, model number of the car that showed up at my door all of this data here i could have looked up all of these specifications but this was just what was specifically listed on the packaging or in the packaging of each of these specific sd cards and as you see right here, all the cards that I used were either UH was a, ooh, UHS-1 interface or the interface wasn't listed, meaning it's probably UHS-1. And the speed classes were either U1 or U3, depending on what it was. Some of them were too old for uh, the application class speed or the video class speed, or they just didn't bother writing it on there. And then the last one that says class is the older classification. And again, you can refer to Christopher's video for his charts if you wanna see that. So I had glam shots of all these at one point in time, but for now, here's just this pile of packages and I'll, I'll put some of the links in the video descriptions, the ones that are worth getting anyway. 
Here's a close up of a, you know, cropped a little bit chart and I can show you what some of the general trends are. And I'd like to revisit this later and redo all of this test. A lot of this data is pretty old and you can see that if you look down at where it says Evo Plus and Evo Plus New Octo, as well as Evo Plus Overclock and Evo Plus older. So that was just the Samsung Evo Plus card. And I decided to do that under a bunch of different conditions. So if you look down at the Evo Plus older, that was a used card that's presumably the same model as the Evo Plus, which is a brand new out of the package card. However, um, the Evo Plus with the plus sign as opposed to plus PLUS seemed to be a faster card as far as like random reads and writes. That was a card that for many, many moons I have been using on my my um, single board computers. Now, if you look at the plus PLUS right above that, you see that technically it's faster, but that's only for sequential reads and sequential writes and file copies, not in terms of um, 4K writes and rewrites. But then when you move over to 4K random reads, the, uh, the newer one is actually faster than the older one. Now, looking right above that is the exact same Evo PLUS card, but using two different versions of Octoprint. So while I was doing this, a new version of Octoprint came out and I thought I would compare them against the other. And you see from that, some of the values went up, like the DD copy in terms of megabytes a second went up from 10.6 to 12.2, but the 4K random write went down. And then if you go one up from that, you will see Evo plus OC. That is where I overclocked the, um, the data bus that the, uh, the card is sitting on. You can see how much faster it got, especially in terms of like the DD and the 4k random read speeds, which after all are the ones that are more important to us in our particular usage case. That's all to say that if you go to a different board that may have, you know, different memory or different controller on it or different firmware on the SD card or um, different firmware on your machine or different version of Octoprint like that, that all changes. And speed is not necessarily tied to the speed classes that they print on the label. So if you look at the rest of the chart, um, it can generally kind of be broken down if you're looking at like the 4K reads to a couple different categories, I guess. So if you're looking for a, um, a card to purchase, I would say the A tier is probably like the SanDisk Extreme Pro, the Extreme Plus and the, the Lexar 633X. The B tier might be like the Samsung Pro Endurance, the, the uh, SanDisk Ultra Plus and the standard Evo Plus that just about everybody uses. Um, but you might might just bump that pro endurance up to a tier if you consider that it's probably going to last a lot longer than the other cards at least that's the intention c tier are like the samsung evo and the evo select and d and f tier are like just the jelly bean cards that come with like cheap electronics or may come with like a 3d printer board or something like that a lot of times it seems from the smattering of tests that i have here they're just not great for this purpose but like I said, I'll probably be doing much more testing with these in the future. I've kept these, you know, fresh in quotes. I haven't been um, reading and writing from a lot of them. So they should be just about as good as out of the package. And they've all had exactly one test run on them. So um, yeah, that, that should apply later on when I get back to this stuff. And uh, yeah. So other than that, hopefully this adds a data point to Christopher's test. And hopefully it gives you some data on how you can go about testing your cards yourself. And I do recommend running some kind of tests on your cards uh, when you get them just to make sure they're not counterfeit, if nothing else. So thanks a lot for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.